You're listening to Podcateers. Welcome to episode 434 of Podcateers. This week we talk about when the Disneyland 100 celebration will kick off in the parks and what we expect to see. Mel gives her initial thoughts on Werewolf by Night. Disneyland is raising prices again. Of course, we drop in some Dreamlight Valley talk. Team Boat Willie is raising money to fight cancer. And Bob Gurr is honored with a scholarship. More information on the Team Boat Willie fundraising efforts will be coming up very soon. So keep an eye out for that on Instagram and on Discord. We'd love for you to join the team and help us raise as much money as possible. We have a goal of $1,000 this year. And last time that we fundraised for Walk for Hope, we were able to raise just over $1,100 in support of fighting breast and gynecological cancers. So again, more information is going to be coming up soon. Links and all that good stuff is going to be available on Instagram and on Discord. So keep an eye out for those. But if you want to discuss anything that we talk about in this episode, we'd love for you to join the conversation on Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter. Just search for Podcateers. But honestly, we'd love for you to join us over on our Discord server. Joining the community is super simple. Just head over to podcateers.com slash 434 and click on the Discord logo, or you can click on the link in our pinned IG story. A very special thank you goes out to an awesome group of people known as the FGP Squad, our podcast fairy godparents, because it's their support via Patreon that helped make these episodes of Podcateers possible. As part of the FGP Squad family, you get some additional perks like exclusive discount codes for Podcateers gear, additional content like the Podcateers after show, and access to our happy hour calls, just to name a few. For more information on how you can become part of the FGP Squad family, we invite you to check out podcateers.com slash FGP. And as always, a super special thank you goes out to the FGP squad for their continued support. All right, so we're going to jump into this podcast. If this is your first time listening and hanging out with us, welcome. Uh, We hope that you enjoy the episode and that you come back for more. And of course, if you've been hanging with us for some time now, welcome back, friends. Here is episode 434 of Podcateers. that I posted on Discord. The Mickey thing? The Steamboat Willy one, yeah. Steamboat. Steamboat What's-His-Face. Yeah, Steamboat What's-His-Face. Mickey the Mouse. I, I, I need one of those. Like, well, I don't even care it. if I just hang it on my wall here. Like, I just, I want it. I want to see you wear a lounge fly backpack around the park. Oh. Dude, <laughs> you know how funny that would look? It would look like yes, I had a tiny turtle. Yes, that's why I want to see it. <laughs> it would look like I had a tiny turtle on my back. <laughs> it's like a turtle carrying a tiny turtle. <laughs> it's adorable, though. I'm here for I it. I love yeah. it. Yeah. It's such a nice one. Yes, with Mickey the Mouse and uh, Pete and Minnie. I don't know. It It's super cool. Garrett McDonald was the, was the designer of that one. And I like his stuff. Like, he's got a lot of really cool stuff that he posts on Instagram. Uh, he's posted just posters and different artwork he's he's an illustrator but he's working with loungefly right now and so that was one of the backpacks that he designed it was that one and a remy one that that has some like 3d elements remy the rat remy the rat yeah, make it a mouse and remy the rat remy the rat yeah oh i'm oh, i'm gonna you got call a that all the time now <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but yeah, that one has like a little bit of a 3D element to it because it's like Remy on top of uh, like some like cheese and some grapes and stuff like that. And then that's layered over like a baguette and a, a bottle of wine, which is got layered like on top board of. There. Well, it's not charcuterie because there are no cold cuts on there. And one thing that's I've true. learned about charcuterie is that it is cold cuts. So if you don't have okay, cold cuts uh, on your it's, board, uh, it is not charcuterie. It's just a it's just a cheese plate. You just, yeah, there you go. Plate. Yes, <laughs> it's just a cheese plate. Yes, exactly. Cheese plate, a little bit of nacho cheese, a little bit of Oaxaca. Ugh. Bring back that Oaxaca from about a year and a half ago when we we're talking about that. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's that good. Did we talk about that on the podcast, or was that just? Yes, because I I don't know. We were talking about quesadillas. I don't know I if that, that was on the off. podcast or not, but <laughs> yeah, I think it was off the podcast because we yeah. were talking well, you know with Larry what? about it, and we were talking about our favorite cheeses for quesadillas, 
and Oaxaca cheese was the one that came up because of just how melty and gooey it is. And every time I went to the store for like two months straight, every time I saw it, I was like, oh, Larry. And then I would want to buy <laughs> it and like ship it to him. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, it's been um, an interesting week. Interesting for me because I've probably logged over 974 hours into Disney Dreamlight Valley as of this point. In the week? Wow. In the week, yes. That Man. is. I mean, I went to the multiverse of Dreamlight Valley and played like <laughs> no one's business. I, uh, I'm i having so much fun with the game. I'm almost done with all of the quests. And mm -hmm. I know that seems odd because I was going to be posting videos to YouTube. But don't fret. I have the videos recorded. Uh, so every time that I've played, I have recorded my sessions. And so as of today, I probably have over 40 videos that I'm ready to post. So the entire thing is essentially my playthrough of Disney Dreamlight Valley up until Scar is released. And probably once Scar is released in the next uh, few weeks, then I'll go back and I'll be able to add some more uh, to the playthrough on YouTube. But uh, because this kind of took on a different life than what I originally intended, which was to stream and kind of play live and stuff like that, uh, I've been playing so late and... You know, I would kind of like just been playing whenever I could, just sneaking it in here and there that I wasn't able to do the streaming as I planned. But I have a new idea and I wanted to get some feedback, especially from the FGP squad, because this was this would primarily be available to them before it goes up for everyone else. But the idea that I have after we after I post the entire playthrough is I'm either going to start a second game. Remember we talked about starting a second game that we could actually mm -hmm. stream mm -hmm. to actually go through the streaming. And uh, the reason I wanted to do it that way was because I wanted to be able to interact with the people in the chat and have them help me make decisions about what we should do next, right? Uh, but because I'm done with this one, I'm still willing to do that on a second account. Or we can level the valley and then we can design it together. So... Uh, you know, when I pitched the idea to the team, Mel brought up a good point. It's it's kind of like our own little armchair imagineering of Dreamlight Valley, right? Mm -hmm. So we can, like, on a live, through the chat, we can interact with each other and, you know, discuss, well, you know, where do we want to put Scrooge's house or Scrooge's shop? Where do we want to put Mickey and Minnie? Like, what type of decorations do we want to add? Do we want to add a pathway here? Do we want to this? Do we want to that? If anybody wants to see that or if anybody wants to be involved with that let's talk about it over on discord because i'm open for this idea i think it would be super fun for us to develop the valley together and that way i still get to keep my game but we have something that we could do together as a group so uh yeah hit us up over on discord let us know what you think of the idea uh but i'm i'm pretty happy because i'm super close to finishing the game right now uh, I think I got a couple more quests. I have to level up Ariel and Ursula a couple more times. I have to, that way I can finally get Eric. But everyone else's tasks are pretty much done. I've unlocked everything. I've finished the task. Uh, I posted. Uh, you guys are going to, I don't know if you're going to think it's funny or if you think I'm dumb for doing this, but uh, maybe a little I posted, bit of both. Maybe a little bit of both, right? So I posted uh, an animated GIF of my like when i walk out of my house and it is just pumpkins right as far as <laughs> i can see i leveled <laughs> out trees i leveled out the trestles i leveled out paths everything like i have just over 800 pumpkins planted throughout the valley and i have so many pumpkins which i have a plan for this and i'll reveal that you know in a future episode but i i have so many pumpkins planted that the game straight up said, you can't drop anything anymore. <laughs> because apparently every time that you dig, every time that you're doing something like that, it counts as a slot in the game for like a modification that you've made. And so I have so many pumpkins and I've made so many changes and dropped so many things that the game straight up said, you can't drop anything here anymore. And it won't let me modify. I can't put bushes back down. I can't put the trestles back up. I can't 
if I delete anything, any like anything that I delete right now, it will not let me put it back. And so I'm thinking that once I have what I need from the pumpkins for the what I plan on doing, then I'm going to fill in all the holes and level that out. And then I'm going to try to put stuff back. And if I can, again, like put the trees and everything that were between my house and Mickey and Minnie's house, which is how I set them up in, in, in my game so far, uh, then I know everything's fine, right? It was just the fact that I had so many pumpkins. But if I level out the pumpkins and I still can't do it, I think I done broke my game. <laughs> and if that's the case... <laughs> Yeah, if that's the case, it's going to be I'm going to be a little sad about it. Unless Hopefully one of the bug, bug fixes. fixes. Yeah. yeah. Bug yeah. Fixes. <laughs> Hopefully the bug fixes address that in the future, but I've been chugging away um doing a combination of okra and pumpkins to to get my monies. I got a nice. little over 2 million monies. Um I'm not being a crazy person like Hazen. And doing some weird pumpkin math. I don't like <laughs> um, pumpkin math. So I yes, I I've uh I've you know, I just doing it for me, so I don't need as you know, uh a whole uh the whole valley full of pumpkins. Um yeah. I have a, I plan a hundred one hundred pumpkins. Don't you No, I have one I have one hundred pumpkins. Don't you though? And I have a hundred and seventy okras, and that's all I do. And it's enough. And I can just do once a day or twice, a, depending on how, you know, on the weekends I get a little more because I can play more often because um, I don't take my Switch to work, um, which, oh. you know, Hazen, can wor- Hazen works from home, so Hazen can play Switch, you know, on breaks, on whatever, whatever you want. I, I, I wish, I, dude. <laughs> Honestly, that's like the one thing that so far has not worked in my favor from working from home. Like, I just kept thinking the same thing. It's like, you know what? Every time I have a lunch break or every time I go on break or something, like, I can play Dreamlight Valley. I can at least water my pumpkins, right? Because you got to water them once because they're four hours a piece. It doesn't work out like that. Like, Like, I'm working straight through most stuff. By the end of the day... I need to take a nap before I go water everything because it is an ordeal <laughs> to water all of my pumpkins. <laughs> they need, uh, you know, how they got auto plant and auto dig and auto water. Like that needs to be in the bug fix. They need that to train nice. the buddies or the companions to do the watering for you. You know what? Here's another gripe. I know we keep getting in this Dreamlight Valley stuff, but you know, it rains and that's supposed to water your plants, oh, but sometimes it oh. doesn't. Oof. And it makes me so mad. It's like, oh, you plant the pumpkins when it's raining. Okay. Just kidding. You come back and they're not watered. Yeah. Um, yeah. Or have you had the thing where, like, you'll turn the map on and they say they're not watered, but they look watered? Yes. Like, they'll be dripping yes. with water, and the, but then you can still water them? Yeah. It's This game is weird. I mean, I know we're, you know, in this weird beta thing system and whatever but ooh, it's annoying they need yeah. to like have a do they have a section in the like a like where we can suggest things or report they do things because they okay maybe i should yeah, do that then because i would be like listen here can you give a list a long list of yeah. stuff here's what's going on so i have it sucks on the switch yeah, okay. I think they know it sucks on the Switch. Like, they're pretty acutely aware that it sucks on the Switch. <laughs> okay, I want to hear your suggestions because I have one big suggestion to make it. So you go first. Okay, so I have I actually have two, like, okay. changes to the game, at least to the structure okay. of how it is now. And they both have to do mm-hmm. – I mentioned one right now. They both have to do with companions. One of them is that you should be able to have a companion that – a lot that just goes and waters your stuff like it they're permanently hanging out with you like it remembers if you close the game turn it off that the last thing you did was hey let's hang out and they don't stop hanging out with you until you switch to another character or until you say bye i don't want to hang out with you anymore thanks for watering my pumpkins right so that's the first suggestion Mm -hmm. two is uh if you're anything like me i made the mistake of assigning way too many characters the gardening role and so there's at least one role there's at least one role that i don't have represented and i think it's the foraging one Mm -hmm. and so 
I, I, I want to make the proposal. So Gameloft, this one's for free, okay? Allow us to change the role, but reset us back to one on the friendship level. Like as, or, as oh, yeah. okay. like as you know, as a penalty for changing it, you know, ch- take us all the way back to one, like level one, and make it harder for us to level back up to ten, right? Like make it twice as slow or something as a penalty for changing it. But at mm-hmm. least that way, we have something to work for, right? Like we yeah. have the ability to change it, and we have a way to kind of reestablish them as level ten. Uh, so yeah, those would be two big changes that I would say would be super welcomed in the game. Actually, I have a couple is, others, yeah. but I want to hear yours, Andrew. Yeah. Well, <laughs> mine's just for the Switch. Base, like, give me a give me a uh, graphics reducer. I would. I th- I think this is you know bogging down the Switch and it's you know it's too big and whatever. I'll go I'll play with lower graphic quality if it means the game doesn't dump every hour or 10 minutes or whatever. Yeah, like yeah. I I'd be happy with a slider that's, you know, less realistic do 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 now I'm playing, you know, Mario Brothers on the Nintendo like, you know, NES or whatever. <laughs> it's fine. Rudimentary as long polygons. As, long as, accurate. <laughs> as long as it doesn't like, it, as long as it doesn't crash in the middle of me gathering something or watering oh, something, like yeah. or in the middle of like, I just got the last two friggin' dr- like shards of whatever, and then it crashed and it didn't save. Also, Ouch. okay, here's another one. Um, why why does the game not auto save every time you complete a thing? Oh, dude! Or like, that is such a big one for me too. Why does it? It's it makes so much sense. Like, okay, you leveled somebody up or you completed a task. You should probably auto save at that yeah. point. <laughs> like, yeah. you're already pulling us out of the like the like game to do this little animation. Might as well do an auto save at the same time. Yeah, mm-hmm. that makes sense. So in the later videos that I have recorded, I actually talk about how there is no rhyme or reason so far that I've been able to find as to how the autosave works. So every time something big happens, I I do my best to remember to go into the settings and manually save the game. Mm-hmm. Because yeah, yeah. if it happens, like, there's been times where I've been trying to collect like 200 pieces of clay and I collect like 201 and then the game crashes. And then I go back, back thinking like, yeah. Yeah, I'm back at like 185 or like 150 or whatever, right? So it's I I recommend saving a lot if you're playing on the Switch. If you go into It seems like yeah. It seems yeah. like it's like every 5 minutes ish. I've never been Maybe. into the same thing where it's been over five minutes. Oh yeah, no. But that's just when I've seen. It seems around four four thirty. Four thirty. I've seen like four thirty, seen... like four thirty something. So you might be right. It might be five minutes, but it need you're you're absolutely correct. The way that you're saying it should be the way that it works. That every time there's a milestone. That's when the auto save should kick in. You it upgrade not be on a, a friend. Timer. You upgrade a buddy. You upgrade yourself. You complete a mission, or Anything. whatever. Like yeah. it should that those yeah. big milestones. I mean, not like if you I picked up one pumpkin and auto save. Like I get that. That's too many auto saves. But if if there's a big milestone, it should be saving. That's or, a, that's right. how video games work usually. Mm-hmm. Right. Like and then the auto thing saves and it does a scroll in the corner or whatever. If I walk into a building, it's already <clears> doing <throat> something else. Might as well save when I walk into a building. <laughs> like mm-hmm. all those things. So yeah. If you're listening, Game Loft. I don't know, Jimmy at Game Loft. I'm sure there's a Jimmy at Game Loft. <laughs> Hopefully, you're uh, you're at uh, uh in the Disney Magic Kingdom, not Disney Magic Kingdom. That's the other game. <laughs> the Disney Dreamlight Valley. I only play Disney games. <laughs> Just wait for that Disney Mario Kart. Then I'll have all the Disney games. What's yeah. that called? Disney Smash 'em Carter Rudies, or I don't know what it's called. Remember when they announced oh, that? Oh, the new one that they announced at at D23. Yeah, Disney Mario Kart. I don't remember what it is. It's called uh, Dis- Speedstorm. Speedstorm. Disney Speedstorm. Everybody's Storm. favorite. Speedstorm. Yeah. So you can actually go to DisneySpeedstorm dot com and you can sign up for the wish list. Uh, it is going to be an Epic Games release as well. 
And so uh, it's slated to be on PS5, PS4, Xbox One, uh, both Xbox Series X and S, the Switch. Uh, in the Epic Games Store, it's going to be on Steam and in the Windows Store as well. But yeah, Disney Mario but Kart. But when? But when? There still isn't a lot of info on the when. Yeah, but when? I want to play cool as Roger Rabbit racing a like a monster truck or something. I don't know. Man, it I'm might gonna be, be something evil, that and you I'm going to save when <laughs> when Universal opens Super Mario Land. <laughs> yeah, you, <laughs> they opened Super <laughs> Mario <laughs> Land, <laughs> and you know what? You said Super <laughs> Mario Land. I know this is going to be way off topic, but you guys watched that Mario yes. trailer? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes, I did. Yeah, <laughs> and we we heard everybody's favorite guy on the planet, Chris Pratt. Yep. Doing his Mario impression. <clears throat> yeah. Somebody's like, the guy is still, the Mario guy's still alive. Like, mm-hmm. <laughs> why didn't they just get him? <laughs> I've come to the conclusion that, one, I don't care. Right? Yeah. Like, I, I think Chris Pratt is a good enough actor that he's going to, like, reel you in to the character. Like, you're going to be, like, well into the movie. Number two, like, Bob Hoskins has sounded nothing like Mario in the video game, right? And that True. was a thing that happened. Like, that was not a great movie. At least this one has the potential of being so close to the video games that we're going to get Mario in scenes and with characters that we recognize and that we enjoy watching. And now, I'm, gl- I'm happy with their – oh, sorry. Go ahead. I'll say my thing ever. Later. No, and I was just going to finish with Chris Pratt was just in such a horrible position because he's getting crap for not putting on this like Italian accent or anything. But then if he did, people were going to be get, like, how yeah. dare he put on an Italian? He's not Italian. How? Yeah, people so will say he's that. Damned yeah. if he does and damned if he doesn't. Like, so the best thing for him to do is just be him. Right. Like, yeah. I think it's yeah, it's I think he but I think the issue is he should have been more him because he's doing like, hey, everybody, I'm here. I'm Mario. Hey, come on. Go. It's OK. But I'm Chris Pratt. Like it's it's like a halfway in between kind of thing. I I, I think I would just rather it be Chris Pratt. Like Me it's too. Emmett from the Lego movie. Yeah. Or they would or cast somebody different, like cast a voice actor that is, you know, trained because I know a lot of people were that, you know, I follow a lot of different voice actors and they're saying like, you, you know, it's the guy that does the Mario voice. He's still around. Like all his credits are all Mario. <laughs> like all he just yeah. does is Mario and Wario. Um, I'm very happy with the casting of basically everybody else. Everyone it seems is really very good. strong. Charlie Day as Luigi, I think, is a great choice. He has a unique voice. I think that I think that's a thing that I'm looking for mostly is people with unique voices. Chris Pratt is one of those like just a leading man guy that just kind of has like he's just a Chris Pratt guy. He's just a guy. Yeah. And he doesn't have, you know, it could be anybody. It could have been George Clooney. It could have been it could have been, you know, uh Ryan Reynolds. It could have been whoever. Like Can you imagine um, if it was Ryan Reynolds? Oh my Reynolds? god. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, King Koopa. I'm Mario. I'm here to save the princess. So I'm gonna need you to step outside now and face me. For her hand. What do you say? <laughs> that was well done. <laughs> uh, Jack Black is Bowser. Oh, he's very, awesome. Very good yeah. casting. I, I love think so that's awesome. great casting. Yeah. yeah. Keegan Michael yeah. Key and much other people in there. I think Keegan Michael Key is Toad. He is. is, is, he's, is funny. His yeah. scream is perfect. <laughs> so, rest. Yeah. I mean, I'm I'm sure we'll all watch it and we'll see. You know, the, he said a literal like a sentence and a half in the trailer. So. That's one snippet of the whole movie, so you never know what it's gonna be. But yeah. <laughs> I know it's been getting a lot of uh, attention on the internet after it well, came out. I mean, he's bringing in the star power, right? Like for he's for, like for the kids. Yeah, like my kids. Uh, I I don't know how many other parents do this, but we like with my kids, I discuss who the voices of the characters are played by. So they mm-hmm. are a, 
like they are aware that it's a voice actor that like Chris Pratt, for instance, is Emmett or whenever somebody comes out, they'll start to make the distinction. They're like, hey, dad, that guy, that character sounds a lot like Mabel from Gravity Falls. I'm like, well, that's because it's the same person playing it. Right. And so Mm -hmm. they get to learn the names and they know a little bit about that. And so like you mentioned earlier, like the Lego movie is huge for kids. And so. Mm -hmm. Mario is a big enough property that I think it's going to bring people in anyway. But for the oh, kids, yeah. they're going to be like, oh, well, it's Emmett playing Mario this time. Right? Yeah. And there's that name mm-hmm. recognition. And, and the blue astronaut guy is yeah. Luigi. <laughs> yeah. You may not have gotten that any other way. So, yeah, I I don't know. I I think it's going to be fine. You know, I I'm think sure it will be. Chris Pratt has a voice that it sounds like, like you said, he's like the every dude, right? But at mm-hmm. the same time, that's he's why he was great as enough. Emmett. Yeah, he's he's good enough that like Emmett was the perfect example that he sounded like the every dude, but at the same time, he was animated enough that he gave that character life, and I think he's gonna do the same thing with Mario. I just watched a video from the, the Super Mario Brothers TV show where this they uh, meet Inspector Gadget, and I thought that was funny. And it was not important, but... <laughs> <laughs> they meet Inspector Gadget? They meet Inspector Gadget. It's the, the guy um, who does the voice of Inspector Gadget, like, dressed up as Inspector Gadget, and he comes and meets him. Uh, oh, uh... Maurice, uh, Maurice Lamont, Lamanche, Lamarch. I always forget how to say his name. The voice of like the brain from Pinky and the Brain and stuff like that. He's the oh, voice of yeah, Inspector yeah, Gadget. Yeah. He, um, he dressed up as Inspector. This is you know the the old show where they're just like the two plumbers, the Mario. Welcome to the Mario Brothers, and they sound like this. Okay. Oh, that's the one with Captain Lou Albano. Yeah, yeah. That, was, yeah. yeah that one and. <laughs> Hey Mario, they're like old. Yeah. <laughs> that one was L- Luigi's like eighty-five that. years old. Uh huh. All right, okay, we're gonna fix us some pipes. Okay, all right, this is a good time. We call Inspector Gadget. Okay, like yeah. That's, yeah. <laughs> stuff is fun. I don't know. Yeah, we'll see. I guess, and we'll see what the movie is like. And I'm sure it'll be a big hit because Mario. It's gonna be oh, fun. Sure it it's be. gonna be a lot. And Jack of Black's in it. Like Jack yeah. Black is cool. Like, Jack Black is cool. I'll see a movie just for Jack Black. Yep. The King of Michael Key. Hey, speaking of movies, uh, I just want to bring up something. I haven't done a lot of research on this, but something that came to mind was, remember how we were talking about how we weren't going to see X-Men in the MCU to, like, after 2025 because there's, like, contracts in place that they have to uh, Uh to expire and all that stuff? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Deadpool is releasing 2024. And Wolverine is going to be in it. So what does well, that do maybe. to those contracts? Are they ending early? Is Wolverine one of the contracts that's ending early? Like, how does this change what we're going to start to see? Well, uh, yeah, I wonder, like, because uh, this, the reporting of the contract stuff, that's kind of like, like third tier down the line like i heard it from a guy who heard it from a guy right that's not like official announcements yeah yeah as far as we know right so it's you never know what like official dates are because some of this news is you know people hear it from a guy and they you know i I, sometimes i'll i just make it think like uh i'll be in the park and then you know no fault of the cast members but they'll hear something from somebody and like say keep telling uh, you know, guess, oh, this thing's opening this date, this thing, you know, they're replacing this with that. And I was like, they got some bad information from mm-hmm. some manager or some whatever, and it gets out there, and then that's how all this, like, you know, rumor spreads is because, and then somebody says, well, I heard it from a cast member. It's like, well, you know, humans are, you know, uh, able to make mistakes. <laughs> it's just because you heard it from yeah. a cast member doesn't mean they didn't get bad information themselves. Um, so the same thing with, with, uh, with that announcement, I is a possibility that it happened, but it's interesting to see maybe they've just paid off some of these things to get them in. Like oh, if if yeah. if they were you know contracts or whatever, they're like well we'll just buy you out or you know buy the contract out or be like okay you can have a half a percent of the money and the whatever because it's I'm curious to know I know we don't have to get into it now but who the contracts are with. 
Like, yeah, is that's it just the part like that streaming made it confusing complex, for me. or like, yeah, yeah, because I mean they own Fox, right? And so exactly, the they majority own the of those to the characters. characters yeah, that's what made it confusing for me, and that's the part that why I hadn't talked about it that I wanted to research more because if they own the characters, what exactly are all these contracts, which potentially are streaming contracts? Um, mm. Or, um, I mean, there's a lot of contracts that are just super old that didn't take streaming into consideration that have just been in place mm-hmm. for like a couple decades, right? Um, but yeah, that's the part that I wanted to research before we really got into this one, but... It just it, – it caught me off guard when I realized, wait a second, we were supposed to get all these mutants, like, officially. Like, they were going to start calling right. them mutants after 2025. But now we got, you know, Wolverine coming in, and there's no way that they're going to – I mean, I, I guess they can get away with not calling him a mutant. But even, um, you know, in, in Wakanda Forever, Namor is technically a mutant, you know, so mm-hmm. I'm sure that that's going to be addressed somehow. You know, we already know that that uh, Kamala Khan is also a mutant. Oh, that's right. You know, they didn't they didn't officially say it, but we got all the little teases and the music sting and everything. So mm-hmm. I, it I mean, it's but happening, uh, right? Yeah. We just don't know when it's going to be officially said or anything. But this felt like. Like it felt like a big shift in the MCU for them to be like, okay, well, we're just going to release this in 2024. So, right. I don't know. Well, and like, how does like the, you know, Doctor Strange of it all with like Professor X and everything f- file into that as well? Because it's a cameo, but it's a big cameo. It's like a big plot point, And he's, you know, part of that whole crew. Yeah. Um, so I don't, you know. <laughs> It's very all this, you know, contract law and whatever is the best, I guess, left to the lawyers because it's going to make my brain hurt if I think about it. <laughs> it's like me trying to think about uh, NFTs because I still don't understand them. <laughs> yeah, don't worry and about that. <laughs> it's, you know, I don't care don't about worry, they them, all but crashed. it's still like they're worth zero. Fine. Now. <laughs> Good. I don't care. Like, it's whatever. They're dumb. To kind of go back on the X-Men with um, Professor X. The only thing I could think of is them falling back saying, well, that's not Earth. So it's not official since it's not our world, if that makes sense. Oh, yeah. That makes sense. That's the only thing I could think of. Yeah. Yeah. But this one, I mean. So don't count. Right. Right. Exactly. (laughs) The Deadpool thing is clearly happening in this version of the MCU. Correct. Yeah. And then I think what Andrew said is they may have just paid them out. I mean, who knows? Money talks, so speed yeah. things up. You never know. So I think he's on some t- onto something. So uh, whatever. I'm happy we're going to get this sooner than later. <laughs> so, <Yeah>. hey. <laughs> they sent get Ryan Reynolds those. in there, gave them a bunch of apples, and they're like, hey, contract holders. You want to sell off your contracts? And they were like, chomp. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and then we get a huge Ackman. <laughs> yes. That's exactly what we get. A hey, that's on Disney Plus, release. I'm pretty sure. <laughs> huge Probably. Ackman, right? Probably. That's on, that's, uh, isn't that Nightmare? Or Nightmare. Uh, Night at the Museum? Is it that huge Ackman? No, that that that? Night at the Museum is uh, Ben Stiller. No, but he's he plays a cowboy like a little like with uh, uh, uh hold on. We would have also accepted the greatest showman. Yeah. I'm looking this up right now because I'm like, ah, is he one of the little characters? I don't remember him being one. I know Owen Wilson is like, yeah, wow, Kachow. So I'm a, I'm a cowboy or something. So it's it's like Night at the Museum three or something. Yeah, huge Ackman. It's uh like Lancelot or whatever goes to oh. like a play of of like King Arthur and Hugh Jackman is playing King Arthur or something like that, and he calls him Huge Ackman. Did and I, I like watch Hugh three? I don't think I, don't I have. I, think it's three. <laughs> I don't know if they had. I didn't even know they had a three. <laughs> I knew the first. There's a four. <laughs> what? Oh my gosh! Aren't they? Are they making a four for Disney Plus? I think or something. Okay. I, wow. I haven't seen no like idea. that went over my head. <laughs> yeah, it's the one with Rami okay. Malik and and yeah, 
I don't know. Huh. Well, Robin Williams is in those movies. He's good at that movie. Okay. <laughs> I, Robin no Williams idea, plays all right. uh, Teddy Roosevelt. Like that's the like silliest thing on the planet. I mean, but that was funny though. And then he says, "Dum dum, give me gum gum." He does. He does say that. That's <laughs> it's a Disney movie now. We can talk about it. Hey, Brad that's Garrett is plays it, voices the Easter Island head in that movie. Hey, everybody loves gum gum. <laughs> they love gum. Dum dum, give me gum gum. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on. This is. I just how, like how do we get Ackman. here? We're talking about movies. He, We're talking about movies. He, yeah, yeah. yeah he, I talked about Hugh Jackman. That's right. So yeah, that's happening. Happy that we're getting this, uh, like Mel said, and yeah, Andrew's probably right. It's just uh, they probably bought out the contracts or something. But I don't know if we'll ever. Or they never know. existed. Or they never existed. <laughs> dun, dun, dun. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, hey, quick shift over. Uh, since yeah. we're talking about movies, uh, this was kind of sad news today. Actually, we're recording this um, just hours after we we got the news that Angela Lansbury passed away. That was yeah. pretty sad. Angela Lansbury, known to a lot of Disney fans as Mrs. Potts from Beauty and the Beast. She's also in Mary Poppins Returns. Mary Poppins and Returns. Broomsticks. Yeah. Uh, also, Drew's Murder She Wrote. Broomstick of yeah, very underrated film. Uh, Bed knobs and broomsticks are very yes, under agree. like known. <laughs> yeah. Um, you know, also you know, f- uh, from like a theater perspective, she was the original Mrs. Lovett in Sweeney Todd on Broadway. Ooh. Oh, um, I didn't know that. So, yeah, yeah. So and you know, bosom buddies. Uh, there's her uh, and B. Yes. Arthur. Or not? Bo- was, is that right? Did I say that? No, bosom buddies is Tom Hanks. That's the one with Tom, Tom Hanks. <laughs> um, isn't it Robin no, Williams? No, it's Tom. Hanks? No, it's Tom Hanks and uh, another guy. It's oh. Robin Williams. <laughs> oh, so um, it's Woody uh, and somebody else. Got it. And yeah. just another guy. Um, no, uh, she was in uh, Ma- uh, Mame with B. Arthur uh, on Broadway, I believe, as well. So you know, legend of stage and screen, uh, Angela Lansbury. Um, I, every time I think of Angela Lansbury, um, I think of. Um, the the late show or late late show with Craig Ferguson, um, he would always he would go has there been a murder and then he would go okay let's uh for it'd be like he did a whole murder she wrote like little like skit and he would dress up like Angela Lansbury and murder she wrote but then he goes okay uh can I see a picture let's show us a picture of uh, Angela Lansbury and it's a picture of Paul McCartney and then you're like <laughs> okay show me a picture of uh you know angela or paul mccartney it's a picture of angela lansbury so that's that's one of my <laughs> uh, my uh most connected memories with angela lansbury is the, the late late show that's funny. but yeah she she's uh uh lived to the uh, great age of 96 uh, yeah so not that not a fantastic uh, not a mm-hmm. short life at all Mm-mm. yeah she i mean just been working nonstop, like I think I read somewhere somebody said she's she's done stuff in yeah no, it was like nine decades nine different decades she when she started in you know I guess whatever ninety years ago ninety nine I can't talk <laughs> it must have been what nineteen I don't even I can't even do that math it's seven six uh, nineteen forty something or whatever nineteen forty five. That's what I'm going to go with. 1945. I mean, if I go to her, my favorite website on the planet, imdb.com. Imdb. Her first credit is from 1944. Oh, I was so um, close. I, yeah. yeah which, which is another <laughs> thing. I, you know, she was in the movie called Gaslight, which the term gaslighting came from, if you know been a hot term uh as of late but that's where that move that term came from was this movie starring you know not i mean she was in the movie she was a the star at that time because she was a very young lady but yeah 1944 and her last credit was 2018 so wow very very long career (laughs) What was that other Dude, like wow <laughs> what was that other like wannabe Mary Poppins movie she was in? Bed Dobbs and Broomsticks. Mm-hmm. No, no. There was another one that she did that was that was supposed to be very Mary Poppinsy as well. Was oh, it a man, Disney film? Drive me crazy now. 
Hold on. IMDb, um, hurry, hurry. <laughs> I'm on IMDb right, be right now. Uh, I'm sure it's not the purple mask or no, um, the reluctant the, debutante. No. What's her name? Her name ah, is, what is <laughs> Julie that? Andrews. Are we talking? Are we talking? <laughs> no, no, no. She was in Cruella. God, what is her name? I have no, I, I don't know. Emma why. Thompson was in the movie with, oh, okay. with her. Are you talking about Nanny McPhee? That one, yes. Oh. oh okay. <laughs> I remember her from that film. Obviously, I didn't um, remember her well enough because this took 17 minutes. Well, yes, <laughs> Nanny McPhee. There we go. 2005. I knew oh. the movie. I just had to say uh, Emma Thompson as a nun or a nun, a n- a <laughs> nanny. Yes. That's what she was. Emma yes. Thompson's a nun. That's a different movie. <laughs> uh, all right. Well, I think we should move on from here. But yes. So Angela Lansbury. You know, our thoughts go out to all of her family and friends. Obviously, a very celebrated uh, actor. Many amazing films. Wonderful career. Uh, long life will be missed. Long life mm-hmm. will be missed. Uh, let's see. We had. Th- I I know we had a list of things that we wanted to talk about, and we've just gone in like seven different directions today, which is cool. That's okay. We we crossed the dump one on my list off. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know Melissa has been itching to talk about Werewolf by Night, but we haven't watched it yet. Yeah. I mean, I could give there a was... quick little thing about it. Yeah, yeah. How what what was it like? Because it's a single episode, right? It's like a little movie. It's like a movie, right? Yeah, and it's in it's, black and white. It's right? pretty much a film, and it didn't feel like it was fifty five minutes at all. It felt like a longer film. Um, in a good way. I'm oh yeah. Oh, definitely okay. in a good way. Like it, you were entertained from the very beginning to the end, and it. Man, it is so cool. If you're if you're a fan of old school horror films, Hollywood, um I wanna say think of like the thirties and just the classic monster movie kind of thing. This if that's if you like any of that, this is gonna be up your alley and I love <laughs> Man, you know we were talking about how in uh, What If We Got Zombies and now we're getting Marvel Zombies? Mm-hmm. Werewolf by Night like kind of brings like this darker um, feel, like really dark through Marvel. And uh, we thought Moon Knight was going to be dark. This is like, man, this is good stuff. And it's a good thing that majority of it is in black and white but it just adds much more to the imagination in certain uh scenes so i'm i'm actually excited for you guys to see it because for me we really enjoyed it like we had fun it's definitely one of those things where you could eat like get some snacks get some popcorn and sit down and watch it like treat it like that turn off the lights watch it fun like it's a fun it's gonna be one of those things where you could probably watch i would say watch on rotation for october Mm, okay so if this is the way that marvel's bringing in horror films and stuff and monsters i can't wait for what's next because this is so much fun so yeah. so much fun, and That's good oh my to hear. gosh, yeah! And he's in DCA. One I of saw them. that. Yeah. Shout out to Larry. He actually got to see it. I think this past weekend, I believe. And nice. yeah, it's so so cool. Oh yeah, kind of jealous, but so cool. I'm glad to hear what you're saying because I, I was reading a, a brief article about how Kevin Feige was talking about how Werewolf by Night seems like it's kind of this one-off thing that's not connected to the MCU but it's really it's really going to introduce uh, a main character I think it's Elsa Bloodstone that they're introducing in this one uh, who's going to be like a major character going forward and in my head I'm just thinking like how is this all connected to the MCU 
And of course, the connection is werewolves fight vampires. Vampire is Blade. Blade is coming later on. Ding, ding. And so yep. there's the connection that we're, you know, that we're getting with this, you know, old style movie that just like, I don't know, from the moment that they teased it, I was super excited about it. I haven't had time mm-hmm. to sit down and watch it. And when I did start it, I was kind of distracted and I had to shut it off because I felt like like I, I want to watch this without distractions and I just yeah, never got you back do. to it. So uh, yeah, after hearing what you said, I'm like even more excited about it now. So I'm not going to say who's in it. I'm not going to do any of that. If you do, you know, go on IMDb, sure. But once it starts and you watch, for me, one of the voices, because I didn't recognize the face, I was like, oh, I know that voice. And so I'm curious to see if you'll recognize who it is. It's Captain Jack Sparrow. You may not. Oh, no. <laughs> Captain Crunch. <laughs> Captain Morgan. Is it a captain? No. <laughs> Arr, no. I thought it was a captain. Ice T. T Pain. You guys uh, are crazy. <laughs> was it electronic? Because then it would have been T-Pain. It's T-Pain. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, <laughs> Mr. T, Ice oh, Cube. Did they pity? Uh, did they pity the werewolf? I pity the werewolf. <laughs> That's no. how you know it's I'm Mr. Mr. T. Werewolf, and I'm, a, I'm Mr. T, and Where I'm did, a How did Mohawk. we get here? <laughs> I don't know. It's me. We just got it's, here. I just I can take us anywhere late. you want to go. <laughs> it's super late. How yeah. have we not gotten here sooner? Come with me on a fantastic voyage. <laughs> Come along and ride on this fantastic voyage. Ah, uh, there's the copyright strike. Yeah. <laughs> there's the copyright strike. That's okay. No, it's seven seconds. So you didn't do seven seconds. Yet. Yes. Nailed it's seven. It. I'm pretty sure it's seven. Got seconds. to six. <laughs> nice. Made the cut. <laughs> I mean, everybody knows that it was, uh, you know, the one and only legendary uh, George Lucas doing the voices in in Werewolf by Night, right? Absolutely. We'll just say yeah. that. <laughs> it was Mr. Bean. <laughs> Rowan, Rowan, Rowan Atkinson. Atkinson. Yeah, Mr. Bean <laughs> was just <laughs> doing it all. <laughs> Yeah, I mean he does talk, you know, <laughs> like or was Gilbert. Everybody Godfrey. forgets he was, was Zazu. Everybody Gilbert forgets he's Zazu. Yeah. It's old recordings of Gilbert Godfrey. It's old recordings like of Gilbert, Gilbert Godfrey. Godfrey. I'll say it again. I talked about the other so, You fool! My yeah. the video of that uh if I brought it up before, I'll bring it up again. Look up Gilbert Godfrey, you fool. It's from the Hollywood Squares. Uh very silly. Uh but that's just a plug for an old video. But anyway. Yeah. Hey, I wonder if Larry got one of those zero popcorn buckets that they had in the park. Those look kind of cool. They do. I just look, hold on a second. Before you go back, I just looked up the Werewolf by Night cast, and I don't even know who you're talking about, Melissa. That's okay. You, you just got to watch it. You just got to watch it. Yeah, exactly. No, but like, it's going to be it's going to be like Danny Elfman, and you're immediately going to think, oh, that's Jack Skellington. No, but I'm looking at the cast, and nobody looks of note. Uncredited. But when you hear it. Uncredited. Okay. That's happened before. That's okay. True. People have gone uncredited, so maybe that's what it is. Okay. So anyway, but yeah, I don't know if Larry got one of those popcorn buckets. Maybe he could come on and tell us. Yeah. That's not a plug. Larry's not just gonna like come on and like <laughs> this Here's is the segment where we call Larry, Larry on the This is where we call Larry on the phone and ask him, Did he get the popcorn bucket? <laughs> it's late, so he's asleep right now. He's like, What's going on, guys? What hey yo, dude, did you get the popcorn bucket? I'm asleep, man. <laughs> we just gotta know. <laughs> <laughs> Inquiring minds want to know if you got a zero popcorn bucket. Here we go. But yeah, those. So this is not the first zero popcorn bucket, no. right? Because Melissa, Mm-mm. you you've you've had a foray into uh, zero popcorn uh, <laughs> buckets in the past, right? Yep. Yep. This is this is pretty much the equivalent of the one where he's in this house so it's basically uh-huh. they just filled the rest which is still pretty cool yeah mm-hmm. i like it but yeah. it lights up i don't oh, remember if i ever got the yeah, one lights up. with this house oh no i i don't remember if i ever got it i know that it was i like wanted back when, it like yeah yeah i, know I know they that were I on, wanted they came it. back yeah i well 
I know we had one on display for a little while, but it wasn't mine. It was just part of the set that we had. Um, and then I remember wanting to get one, but then it was sold out. And then when it came back, I was excited because I thought, okay, cool, I can finally get it. And I didn't. And but but I did find another popcorn bucket that I think you'll find interesting. Um, give me a moment. I'm going to quickly grab it. Talk amongst yourselves. This is so not good for recording purposes, but I'm going to post this on Discord. So if you're hearing this, go to Discord, check out what I'm posting. I'll be right back. All right. So Hazen will be right back, but we're going to talk about, um, I don't know. It's like I'm what? still trying to figure, I I'm trying to figure out is. who this voice is. I, I'm looking through this IMDb cast. No, don't do that. <laughs> but no, no. like literally, no, I recognize. No, because that defeats everything I just said. I recognize zero names. You said go on IMDb. I don't care <laughs> is what you just said. I recognize zero names on this list. So I guess I will just be surprised because it must be somebody that does a character that I don't know their name. Um, but it'll be interesting. I don't know. It'll we could. Be we cool. could. Let's see. Is it? I don't know. I'm going through this guy's. This guy's a voice actor. He's done a billion things. That's the thing with voice actors is they do so many things. It's like, you know, it'll be like Tom Hanks has like 65 credits. Or oh something. yeah. And then it'll be like like D. Bradley Baker will have 4,200. I'm gonna I'm gonna look up D. Bradley Baker right now because he has. Uh, let's see. Okay, D. Bradley Baker has a total of 654 credits on IMDb, wow. and Tom Hanks has a total of, let's see how close I was, if my internet wants to cooperate. It might not. Oh, come on. Just click on Tom Hanks. So Hold on, Hazen. You're back, but I'm trying to see how many credits Tom Hanks has I'm on just IMDb. curious. Two so how- million. I wonder how many Jim Cummings has then. Cause yeah, Tom Tom Hanks has f- uh oh no I need it as actor. Ninety four credits. So D- Tom Hanks has ninety four credits. D- uh, let's see, Jim Cummings. I'm trying to think who He's... else. Well, that's why I picked D. Bradley Baker because he does like a lot of like weird stuff. Mm-hmm. Five hundred and ninety one Jim Cummings has. Okay. So D. Bradley Baker is six hundred something. Um, oh, but yeah. anyway, Hazen what is about back. Jim Hanks. We're talk- Jim, Jim Hanks. <laughs> How many toys has Jim Hanks voiced? Two million. Jim Hanks has a total of eighty-eight credits on IMDb. Okay, it's a it's a pretty substantial amount there. All right, so I realized I I was so excited because like oh I found this popcorn bucket while I was roaming through my stuff and I just realized this isn't a popcorn bucket it's actually a sipper. That's <laughs> oh. okay. <gasps> oh, the skinny Ooh. Jack, the real yeah, skinny that's... Jack Skellington sipper. He's got like the. He looks like buff though, he because he's like his body's the cup. He's awesome. Yeah. Did you open he yours? Is awesome. Mouth? Oh yeah. <laughs> I mean, you could put popcorn in him. Like it's not like you, nobody's gonna yes. stop you. I, I love I it know. because its arms are like you could bend them, which I haven't done, but it's so cool. Oh, you can. And then you put it on a table. It's his legs dangle. It looks really awesome. Oh man, I might have to take him out of the package and sit him up on the shelf. If I can yeah. pose him, if I can pose could. him, or if I can find a way to like sit him down. I mean, I don't know. I can. I think the reason I bought it originally wasn't because I wanted to keep him. It was because I wanted to auction it off for like Walk for Hope or something when they first released it because. This was like three years ago, right? Like three or four years ago mm-hmm. when they released it. Something like that. I don't remember. The point is that I don't <laughs> think I bought it because I was going to keep it. I think I bought it. Is there a point? I don't think off. there's a point to anything we've talked about in this episode. Nope. I don't Probably think. not. But, that's okay. <laughs> but you know what? I do have a good point since we're talking about possibly auctioning this off is we signed up for Walk for Hope. Again this year, yeah, we're gonna be raising money to join the fight against women's breast and gynecological cancers. The walk this year is going to be virtual again. Uh, we'll oh, probably okay. have some kind of thing to celebrate it, or some live stream, or something where we get together. Uh, but the idea is to try to beat what we raised last time. 
last time that we raised money for Walk for Hope, our goal was to raise a thousand dollars, and the last time I think we raised just over a thousand. It was like eleven hundred or twelve hundred, close to twelve hundred or something. I don't remember what it was exactly. Uh, but we set the same goal this year. We're going to try to raise $1,000. We're going to either do it through standard fundraising where we ask people to donate towards our fundraising pages. Uh, oh, here I found it. So we were trying to raise $1,000 and we raised $1,175 in the end. And a lot of this had to do with the auctions that we had. It was just very generous people donating to our fundraising page. Uh, there's going to be a link to that if you go to uh, teamboatwilly.com. I'm going to make sure that I post that this week. Once it's available, I'll also post it to Instagram and Discord and everywhere in case you want to donate. Uh, but we'd love for you to join the team because the more people we have on the team, obviously, the more we can get the word out there that this is what we're trying to raise money for. Uh, I do plan on doing a couple of auctions this year. More information is going to be coming up on those. Uh, we'll run them on Instagram the same way that we have before. The winner will not give us any money. You will donate the money directly to our fundraising page. Once you can send us a screenshot that you've made the donation, then we'll package up your prize and you know we'll ship it out to you. Uh, we have a couple of items that are potentially going to be uh, auctioned off. So again, more info on that. But we also thought we would make it a little fun and make it a little competitive. So we have some board games, some puzzles, uh, maybe a couple of other items that are up for grabs. So our top fundraisers for Team Boat Willie will be eligible to possibly win uh, like the Haunted Mansion board game by Funko or the It's a Small World board game. People on Discord got first glance at a couple of those prizes uh, that I posted late last week, I believe. I don't remember. Uh, but yeah, Walk for Hope, November 6th, 2022. Uh, so it gives us, you know, several weeks to to start raising some money. We got about, uh, about a month at this point. What are we at? Just shy of a uh, month. Just shy of a month. Yeah. So, uh, again, more information and the link is going to be posted to Instagram and on Discord. We'd love for you to join the team. We're going to do some streams. We're going to do some live stuff. And then we're going to do the auctions. If you have any ideas to help us raise some money or, again, if you join the team and would like to raise money to help us out, that would be fantastic. Um Anything you guys want to say to help us get everybody hyped to help us raise a thousand dollars or more this year? I just think it's it's the spirit that we have, and with everybody like rooting us on and helping us out, I think that's what it is that carries us through. And like we've said before, it, um, a dollar, even a dollar donation, is a dollar more than what we had before yeah that rhymes <laughs> yeah <laughs> no amount is too small <laughs> right so we don't you know we don't go out asking for 20 for 30 no we're just happy that a dollar like that's making some sort of a difference already so i'll ask for 20 30 okay hey, you, you do that 20, 30, <laughs> i'm gonna do it 200 yeah you want to donate to my page 200 no, i'm just kidding well any any every little bit helps mm -hmm. and you know if a thousand people donate a dollar we reach our goal yeah you know yeah. more more than more than that listen to this show so you can go find the the you know team boat willy stuff wherever hazen said it's gonna be because i was trying to figure out how to make my page and i uh, for join the team and I forgot how to do it um, while you were talking. So yeah, but yeah, everybody donate a dollar. We'll meet the goal and then you can go uh, on Instagram and do all that fun stuff and win a board game maybe or something. I don't know. I got a pile of stuff here. Maybe we should do like, maybe I'll uh, get, make a little, I have a lunch box and some Madame Tussaud pins and oh, something from right. spirit Halloween. And I don't know. I should make a mystery box. Mm, that would be fun. <laughs> like a, maybe, a mystery maybe, prize. That would be like a good live one. But 
uh, yeah, I'm hoping that we can raise a good amount of money and I'm excited. We got prizes. We got all sorts of stuff. Oh, and uh, if I remember correctly, we might actually have a handful of the special edition Team Boat Willie pins still available. These were the oh, pins nice. that we had a year ago. We decided that we were going to make uh, Team Boat Willie pins, but instead of making them silver and black because it was the inaugural pin, we made it all like gold and black. And so that version of the pin will never be printed again, but uh, they're available for purchase on the website. Um, you can go to podcateers.com slash gear and you can purchase them there. So more to come. Just wanted to make sure that we got that out there because we're getting close to, like you said, we're just under a month at this point. So we got to get the ball rolling on this and we got to act fairly quickly if we want to try to meet that goal of $1,000. So, uh, yeah, look out for those links. If you have any questions, please feel free to reach out to us. You can either reach out to us on Instagram, the blog post for this episode. Uh, or you can join us over on Discord. We'd love for you to join us there. Uh, there's a pinned IG story with a link to our Discord. Uh, that would be the best way uh, to link over. But yeah, super excited that we have this coming. Uh, this is also a great time to remind you that this episode of Podcateers is brought to you by a fantastic group of listeners known as the FGP Squad, our podcast fairy godparents, because it is their support via Patreon that help make these episodes of Podcateers possible. Being part of the FGP Squad family gets you some additional perks like access to additional content over on Patreon, like the Podcateers After Show, additional audio files, extended episodes and talks that we've done on films and uh, access to our happy hour calls and discounts on new Podcateers gear, a special section of the Discord server, all sorts of stuff. Uh, I recently sent out just random stickers that we were making. Um, so, yeah, it, it's it's fun. I'm getting a nice little of pile other. of stickers from Hazen over here. It's getting pretty <laughs> f- pretty hefty, this pile of stickers. You guys, guys got to get on on this, this pile of stickers. I like stickers. And I do, awesome. too. I got... I got I got stickers from Chris for Christmas from Melissa one year. It's cool. <laughs> that was I fun. Like Sticker. <laughs> yeah, the uh, the great thing about make or getting all these like test stickers is that the side of my PC right now uh, is full of all these vinyl stickers that we've been testing out. So there's a big Steamboat Willie one that we just tested that is possibly going to be the next one that we send out to people. Uh, we do have nice. uh, a Kingdom Hearts one that uh, a couple of members of the FGP squad have received. That's one that hasn't really gone out, uh, but a couple of members of the FGP squad have gotten that one. It's the heart with the keyblades crossed underneath it, so we got some of those to give out. Um, and more stuff is coming. We have more stuff. But, yeah, if you're interested in becoming part of the FGP Squad family, head on over to podcateers.com slash FGP. There you will find a link to our Patreon, some info on the FGP Squad, and some of our top contributors. So if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us either on Instagram or through the post. Uh, But we'd love for you to join us on Discord, and you can also reach out to us there. So to all of the members of the FGP Squad, we just want to send a huge thank you for your continued support. Uh, the spinning the magic wheel. It's Heather. Thank you, Heather, Yay! for being such a cool, fun. Everybody's cool. I've lo- I've run out of like like uh, adjectives to describe people, so it's just cool. But they are Heather, cool. you're so cool. Everybody's <laughs> cool. I mean, it's not a bad thing to be like cool, but I just wish I had a like a bigger vocabulary to be like you're splendiferous They're and magical. Heather, you're splendiferous <laughs> and super califragilistic expialidocious. There you go. <laughs> all the different things. Thank you for being. So such a great supporter. Heather is always on the Discord talking about stuff all the time. So uh, head over there, you know, or with our new FGP people. You want to be like Heather, be cool. Join the FGP. So, yeah, Heather, uh, thanks for being so cool. Uh, rock and roll. Rock and yeah. roll! <laughs> rock and roll! <laughs> Uh, let's see. What else do we have? There's some park news that we got this week. You know, they're, they're opening, you know, some stuff in Toontown and we're kicking off the celebration. So I definitely want to talk about that. Uh, but, uh, how much do we want to get into this whole ticket price increase and Genie plus price increase and food stuff? Because 
I, I mean, it's a most week, wonderful time. It's of happening the every year, year right? Yeah. Like, oh, the prices yeah. are rising and it, <laughs> and <laughs> making people <laughs> so angry. It's the most priciest time of the year. Ding ding ding. ding, ding. <laughs> You know what? I'm all for Christmas music. Uh, not that Christmas music, though. That's we can deal without that. <laughs> yeah, price uh, increases. Uh, stinky poo poo. Uh, I don't like it. Um, I mean, granted, I have the pass, so I already locked in with my prices. But it's uh, you know for pass, you know ticket anyway. But it's it's interesting what they're doing. I'll, I'll run through them. How about I just run through what I've seen real quick and sure. we can just get it, rip the bandaid off. So they've. Uh, raised prices, but then also added a new tier for tickets. So instead of just keeping tier one and adding like a tier seven, they've added a tier zero. Um, so tier zero is the same price, $104 one day ticket. And then everything has gone up between like, like 10, I forget the percentage wise, but basically, so here we go. Tier one, Went up from 104 to 114. Tier 2 from 119 to 129. Tier 3, 134 to 144. Tier 4, 149 to 159. Tier 5, 159 to 169. And Tier 6, 164 to 179. I think that's the biggest price jump. Tier 6 going up uh, $15. Um, and then adding that Tier 0, staying at $104. Um so it's interesting that they just didn't add a tier seven and kept if they I think it would have been more interesting for them to just add a tier seven and keep all the prices the same. They would in theory be making more money because the tiers would have been more expensive. Um and it would have seemed like they're not raising prices, they just had another tier. Shush, um, stop which, giving them ideas. Well, I mean, that's, I mean, it's just, you know. <laughs> you know they listen. <laughs> they do the listen, time. but like, it just doesn't make any sense. They would be, they'd be making more money and it wouldn't be as big of a, I think, of news. And so that kind of pricing has also gone into effect for park hopper tickets. Um, the cheapest park hopper going from 164 to 179 and the most expensive going from 224 to 244. So $20 increase there. And yeah, and food has gone up. Genie Plus went up from twenty to twenty five dollars, and uh, parking has stayed the same. Standard parking stayed; they didn't go up this time. But uh, preferred parking went up from forty five to fifty. And yeah, the food price has gone up. Like like fountain drinks went up thirty cents. Stuff has been going up from like twenty cents to a dollar food wise. Um, I know Walt Disney World like stuff has uh, you know their their price hikes happened same time as Disneyland and they've had some other stuff. Their genie plus is on a, it's on like surge pricing kind of it's on a, on a day by day basis, what the price is. Um, so yeah, uh, prices are going up. They go up every year. It's, uh, not an uncommon thing, but a very unwelcome thing in my opinion. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. I have so many mixed thoughts about this because obviously as you know, somebody that loves the parks, you don't want to see this happen, right? But I'm so numb to it at this point that I just know it's going to happen again. And more yep. importantly, people are just going to keep going and they're going to keep paying the price and Disney's going to be like, well, they keep coming, so keep raising it until they stop coming. And what's that number? Like, we don't know what that number is. So at this point, expect a yearly price hike and do what you can when you want to go. I mean, I I don't know what else to say about this. Be otherwise, it's just going to sound like sour potatoes, right? And yeah, every year. I mean, they're just trying to make their money. That's it. I mean, that's pretty yeah. much it. That's it. Yeah. I, well, they're trying to take their hand and grab the money out of your pocket. Yeah. That's what they're trying. <laughs> I mean, yeah, no, it's yeah. Things it's, things are coming back yeah. too as well. So I'm sure it's like to pay for other stuff. So it's Quote again, unquote. it's a business. So it hurts, but they got to do things. So eh. yeah, it's you know eh. the price hikes that they've been 
every year for the past forever. Like it's forever. it's a yearly yeah. thing. So it's it's not uncommon, but the the uh, jumps as to which they have hiked have uh, more and more increased every year. You know, it'd be like, oh, ticket prices are going up two dollars. Okay, and then they're like, okay, this year they're going up forty dollars or whatever. Like the passes went up what three hundred dollars that one year. It was insane. So it's it's uh it's not that the prices are going up. It's that they're going up. Uh, I think more than justified. Yeah. And now I've you know I don't want to dwell on this too much, but I've you know been reading and people are speculating like they're trying to squeeze all the money out of everything else to bolster funds so Genie Pl- or Disney Plus can grow. That's like they're the whole company's kind of focused on Disney Plus at the moment. And so they're like, well, we need all this money so Disney Plus can be Disney Plus. Um, I don't know how much of that is true. We'll see. Uh, I did also read that cast members will be getting park, you know, uh, park cast members will be getting uh, A access raise? to the parks and – no, the, no, 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 no. Of course not. They'll be getting their park access and a Disney Plus bundle included with their employment. An extra, you know, $100 worth a year uh, that the Disney Plus. Bu- well, you know, it was that when Disney Plus first came out, they're like, oh, you can get the theme park or your Disney Plus bundle. Now they can have both. Uh-huh. In the words of Jake oh, Peralta. that's true. Cool, 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 cool. That's perfect. Yeah. So take that as you will. Yeah. But Disney 100's starting soon. Yeah. Celebrating 100 years. They released concept art of what the castle's going to look like, right? Yeah. There's going to be some fountains and some banners. And then it looks like a castle. Where's the fountains? It looks nice. Like, I the fountains are like in the moat thing, whatever you want to call it. No like on kidding. the left and right of the, the bridge, yeah. There's like oh. little just kind of like nice looking fountains. Oh. Um can't complain. I like no. the nice little fountains. It's nice. Uh I wonder, you know, it it, you know, begs the question, are these going to be used in the new fireworks show? Is this going to be kind of like like Paris has those fountains in front of the castle, oh, and they yeah. use them kind of like world of that color. That would be nice. Now the this rendering does look like it's just like two fountains that are just kind of like nice fountains that are just you know like you'd see in a park or something. But it that gives would life. Be awesome if they were though. <laughs> it does. Yeah. But it would yeah exactly. But it's it. My guess is it's just two little fountains that are nice. Um, but one can dream. Um. So yeah, but there's some banners that that it, that looks like it. It's got some banners and flags, and the flags are purple, um, and like that's like the color seems to be purple and like iridescent are the the colors scheme for this Disney 100. Okay, but let's ask the question that's on everyone's mind: How does this concept okay. art compare to the tiny space mountains for the 50th anniversary? Tiny Space Mountains. On the top of every spire, they had like the weird diamond Uh shaped plastic sitting on top that looked like tiny space mountains. Oh, the crown things? Or they like not the crown things, the other things? They they look like. Oh, the spires. Yeah, the spires had like the the diamond shape, but because of the the little crown at the top, it looked like tiny space mountains. It did because it was white the way that it lit up. Yeah. Let's see, Disney. This is wait for the fiftieth or the sixtieth? Uh, sixtieth. Um, sorry. I think it's 60th. wait. Maybe okay, it was, you yeah. said fiftieth. Maybe it was the 50th. no fiftieth was crowns. That was all gold. Everything was gold. Mm-hmm. Oh, everything was gold for that one. It was the sixtieth. You're right. Yeah. Okay. Because that's I'm when looking. we got the one more Disney day. Yes. Yeah. Whatever. And the yeah. cupcakes in Tomorrowland. <laughs> Oh, yep. that's funny. I I looked up the 60th and I clicked on a picture and it's our uh, the first picture that came up is a picture from our good friend, not FGB pe- member Albert, but other Albert. That is our good friend Albert from uh, Disney Photography and West Coast. Oh, Internet. cool. West nice. Coast. It's the first photo I typed to Disneyland 60th Castle and it was Albert's photo. So, uh, yeah. Of course. Anyway. <laughs> um, 
I see what you're talking about here. I never thought they looked like space mountains because they're so pointy. But I really? can see where you're talking about. Yeah, because space mountains. It's the first thing pointy. I saw when when I first saw the castle. That was like the first thing that came to mind. But I see what you're talking about. But yes, there there's no tiny space mountains on this one. It's uh, just regular spires and purple and iridescent. Oh wait, the banners. final castle didn't have those shells on them. Now that I remember that, are you talking about the concept art? No, it wasn't the concept art. Is when they first started putting the sparkles on the spires, they had covers on them, and that's what I thought looked like tiny space mountains. Gotcha. Because they took them off oh, by the time with like that... the stripe, the stripes or whatever. Yes. You're talking about. Okay. Yeah, where they yeah, had them. Up I was for remembering like it wrong. Three months. They had them up for three months, and then they put the snow on or whatever. Yeah. Or no, then they just took them off. Or I, don't I, know. Yeah, I, I was remembering it wrong. I'm sorry. That's okay. <laughs> Back to the topic at hand. Um, Mickey and Minnie Runaway Railway will be opening with the kickoff of Disney 100 on January uh, 27th of next year. Um, so that'll be fun. And it's going to be interesting because that's the only thing I'm re- like, that's the only thing that's open. It'll Mickey. So I'm just going to guess there's going to be a construction wall pathway from yep. from under the bridge to the attraction and the rest of two town will not be open. I don't yeah. think as, there's from what it sounds like. Yeah, I don't think anything else is going to be open because the park that they're promising in Toontown, mm-hmm. it was slated to open in mid spring. Yeah, so I w- I mean, it would be nice if they were able to at least open the, you know, like the east side of Toontown, the this attraction in Roger Rabbit. Like if that section's done, then they can at least have two more attractions open and then it's just the play area and Mickey's house and everything that's not open yet. Um because other than facade stuff, I don't think they're doing anything to Roger Rabbit that's already had its little update before Toontown closed. Yeah. So um, it'd be. I, I mean, we'll see. We got a, a couple months to wait, but it would be nice if they at least had that half of the park of the the land open to, you know, when rides are closed, it gets busier because they're not eating people up. So yeah, yeah. I mean, I know that we don't have other information about when Wondrous Journeys and World of Color One are supposed to kick off, but. I feel like the twenty mm-hmm. seventh is also going to be the day that those things kick off because by then, uh, like World of Color is going to have the season of light, like the the holiday version of World of Color, right? And that's are running. They, are they doing I think, that through the eighth? I, I don't think know. they are. I don't know. I haven't looked. I, it I up. mean, if they do it, then it's probably going to run through the first week of January. It's... Right? Yeah, like seventh, so, eighth, whatever they usually yeah. the first week, right? It's when they take all the holiday stuff down. So if they yep, do yep, yep. that and they're launching on the twenty eighth, like it, it, it'll feel like like with the with the sixtieth, as soon the day that they kicked off the sixtieth is also the day we got Disneyland Forever and Paint the Night. So I feel like it's appropriate for them to also launch World of Color one and Wondrous Journeys on that day. Because if it's just Mickey and Minnie's Runaway Railway, it's gonna it I, like it would fall flat almost. Well, I mean, so the the in the hundredth anniversary thing is going for like eighteen months or whatever. They always do something like that. And the other thing with with uh, the sixtieth is that kicked off in the summer. So oh, that's true. You know that kicked off it in kicked May. Off May. Yeah. Um. It, it was my birthday, I remember, because it <laughs> when yep. the, the 60th. It was my birthday. I drove down out of the middle of the night. It was insane. Um, but it was it kicked off in May. Um, so it was already the middle of summer, and that's fireworks run every night in the summer. Whereas in January, typically, they if they run, they run on the just the weekend. Um, so it'll be interesting to see oh, if yeah. because of the – because if they kick it off, then if they're if they just do the weekends or if they do like a week of of showings and and stuff like that, the you know scheduling is all different in January because that's kind of like what used to be off season now is just kind of like the time when they use to uh, put attractions down and take holiday decorations down and stuff like that, but still yeah. really busy. The one that we know for sure is possibly going to be like late February, March 
you know, right around that time is going to be magic happens. That'll be the spring yeah. break time for sure. That's a spring of 2023. So yeah, it's, it's probably yeah March, mid March would be the guess or early yeah. March at the earliest. Um, I'd call February winter still. Um, I mean, we're in California, so it doesn't really count. It's, it's all dependent on who decides if it decides it wants to rain or not. Oh, that's <laughs> or true. Be cold. Yeah. yeah, it is raining. But in February. it could be a hundred degrees in February, or it could be a hundred degrees. True you never that. know. True that. True. Well, that. we do have that to look forward to. So, a hundred years of celebrating the Disney Company <laughs> is coming up. Uh, I it would have been nice, I think, to see Toontown fully revealed for the kickoff. But you know, you can only do so much and. Uh, I think I'd rather have something yeah. than just wait till the whole yeah. thing. I, I think having the attraction is a really good way to start off the celebration, uh, which is why I think the other things are also going to launch at that time, too. But more info to come on that from the Disney company. It hasn't been exactly clear when those things are going to begin. But once we know, you know, we'll let everybody know. And uh, yeah. Uh, one more thing that I wanted to bring up before we close out this episode, and that is we wanted to wish Bob Gurr a very warm congratulations because uh, this last week he was honored by the Garner Holt Foundation with a scholarship. Bob, you know, he's he's designed so many things in the park. It, it, people say that if it moves, if it's on wheels, it was probably Bob that designed it. You know, really early on, but he's <laughs> designed the bobsleds, the doom buggies, the monorail, all sorts of stuff around the park. Bobsleds. Yes, the bobsleds. What did I say? The, the bobsleds. No, you said bobsleds, but his name oh, is Bob and I they're see. bobsleds. Yeah. I thought I somehow <laughs> said it wrong. No, you said it right. I just said bobsleds. Um, but, you know, Bob has had uh, um, another career outside of Disney, right? He's gone on and, and he's made these amazing animatronics and work with other companies like he made the King Kong at Universal Studios and he had this like huge show in Las Vegas at one point um I th what what uh, casino was it for again Treasure Island is the that Treasure the show? Island that's what it was cuz okay. it was the pirate uh the stuff pirate yeah. yeah Treasure Island then yeah um so yeah it's super cool that the Garner Holt Foundation has honored Bob with an engineering scholarship uh in his name uh he's not the only uh Disney a legend that has that honor uh, from the Garner Holt Foundation. Floyd Norman also has an animation nice. scholarship from the foundation. <clears throat> Tanya Norris has a design scholarship for the foundation as well. Awesome. Uh, also amazing Disney legends in their own right. Uh, Garner Holt obviously has one in his name as well. So um, mm -hmm. GarnerHoltFoundation.org slash scholarships is where you can go if you want more information on that. Uh, they do uh, offer the opportunity for you to contribute to the scholarships. Uh, but it's it's great because Garner wanted a way for uh, youth in the community to have a way to pursue their interests. And it, it doesn't matter if you're going to like a four-year college or if you're going for a trade school certificate or anything like that. Like if you show the interest and they, they – you know, they can award you one of these scholarships. So if you're a student interested in engineering or design or animation, I strongly suggest that you head out and check out what the Garner Holt Foundation has to offer because uh, Garner Holt, in his own right, uh, an amazing man, amazing person, super talented. Uh, Garner Holt Productions is responsible for a lot of animatronics around the world, including things at Disneyland. One of the biggest things that uh, people are familiar with uh, is the, I think it's one of the things that people are most familiar with that they've contributed to is the Nightmare Before Christmas overlay for the Haunted Mansion. Um, although they've contributed to way well, more. Well, everything, uh, everything after like 2014 is them. Yeah. Um, so like but, like Little Mermaid is all them, the yeah, uh, Rise of Resistance is them, like oh Rise of the Resistance stuff. Was I'm them pretty too? sure the animatronics are are Garner Holt, if I'm not mistaken. I could be wrong, but I think animatronics are Garner Holt uh, for Rise, and I know I know for a fact Little Mermaid is Garner Holt. So Ursula and everything in there is Garner Holt for sure. Right. Um, but yeah, and uh, yeah, I think Red and then Pirates is them. Oh, interesting. Um, cool. Yeah, I think I'm. I'm. 
if I, you know, somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm pretty sure anything that's animatronic, unless it's some weird, you know, thing or they're busy, I don't know, but is Garner Holt in the parks if it's after like 2014 or something like that? Oh, unless, but the Hatbox Ghost, that was Daniel Joseph with Imagineering that made that one. So I think that's one of the only ones that wasn't. That was like a special, yeah, yeah. special project. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. I just had a right question on. about it on Quizzingland. We talked about uh, we talked about um, uh, 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 Mapo. You should all go listen to Quizzingland. If you like quizzy stuff and you like Disney history, you like Quizney tri- uh, Quizney trivia. Quizney like trivia. Disney <laughs> trivia. Uh, listen to Quizneyland. It's part of the Podcasters Network. You don't have to sign up for an additional feed. It'll just show up in your feed along with this podcast. So yeah, I got uh, and I got silly dumb titles that are uh, movie sequels for some reason. There's some I, I like just, that. Part I just had them. a silly. I was like, you know what? I'm gonna just do movie sequel titles, and that's how that is. They have no relation to the the episode whatsoever but it's fun <laughs> so yeah last week's episode was fun uh hopefully we'll have something uh our one year's coming up pretty soon next month oh, so yeah. um hopefully we'll have something fun for that who knows uh still in the works but yeah we got uh lots of fun stuff every other week quizneyland so i'll plug it every every chance i get but yeah it's it's in the pocketeers feed i'm sure you listen to it they're 10 minutes it's fun yeah you learn a lot there's been tons of stuff mm-hmm. that I've learned from listening to Disneyland, so I know I have fun listening to them. Well, I just on the Bob Gurr Wikipedia. Did you know Bob Gurr uh, consulted for the T Rex animatronic in Jurassic Park the movie? I did not know that. And also the wow. animatronics used in 1998's Godzilla. So that's something else. Right on. That's fun. Good job, right Bob on. Gurr. Congratulations. Yeah. So I think that's a great place to end it. I think that's a really great positive place for us to end this episode. Any additional thoughts before we close out today? Go visit nope. Timba Willie and give us money. I mean, they can give us money. Let's go to us. <laughs> go to... <laughs> yes. Give, you know what I mean. Money to we the know cancer what you research. Mean. Give money. And, well, you know, then you might be entered to win a prize or something. I don't know. However, <laughs> Hazen's working that out. Money, 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 money. There's a song that goes something like that. Yeah, more information <laughs> will be posted within the next day or so. Uh, the link to our Walk for Hope page will be available. Uh, keep an eye out on Instagram and on Discord. Uh, we'll also post it on our Facebook page. And if you have any questions, again, please feel free to reach out to us. We would love for you to join the team and help us raise money. Uh, we got 1000 bucks. If we can get 1000 people to just donate $1, we're there. You know, But if they want to donate there. more... If they want to donate more, then we'll be even further than there. We if will 500 be... people do- yes. donate two dollars. There we go. Yeah. Or I mean, we 250 can keep people donate four dollars. Yeah, we can keep if going. If four people yeah. donate two hundred and fifty dollars, or if like, one person donates a thousand, one hundred billion dollars. <laughs> I don't know if a credit card transaction could go through for that number, but hey, if you're willing to try it and you got that Amex Black, do it. (laughs) All that and a bag of potato chips. Oh, I will gladly get somebody a bag of potato (laughs) chips if they donate that amount to our campaign. So that's it. That's going to wrap it up for this week. Until next time, keep dreaming, keep moving forward, and always remember to pass on the magic. Have a fantastic week, everyone. Go blue. (laughs) See ya. Part of the Podcateers Network.